Yes people, it is your boy Joel from Joel's Barbershop and I'm on a mission to seek every sick barbershop in the country, so let's go for it. Tig today over in Wittick in Leicester, not too far from Joel's Barbers. He's got a cool little studio that I'm keen to see, so we'll meet you there. Um, yeah, so basically, we converted the garage in here, so it was just a basic like run of the mill sort of garage um, and we got I got a few of my mates together and we sort of put the walls in and actually sort of created this cool little space and I wanted it to just be some kind of creative little bit where lads can come and have their own time as well and yeah we I wanted it to be a sort of secluded not on the high street type type place and yeah a place for guys to come and open up as well and it's it's worked really well i think we've we've managed to create that and you know i've got luckily now people like slick gorilla are sort of in stock and i can sort of build on things like that as well and yeah it's just a nice little creative studio space to kind of come and uh yeah, cut hair and make and make some cool content and stuff really so Would you be able to tell me how long you've been barbering and how did you start in the industry, bro? So, uh, it's a bit of a long story. So I started originally when I was 19. So that's 15 years ago. Uh, went to college, learned to cut ladies' hair. Um, oh, so you started off in women's? Yeah, yes. so I started, because back then, like, it, it was, was hard to get into barbering just work, because that was the same problem I had. There was nothing around, like, yeah. barber-wise, unless you were in walking barbers and it was just like mad yeah. and it was kind of i wanted to kind of learn a skill with it so i i went to college um did a couple of years at loughborough college uh kind of came out thought i was ready kind of thought i was you know i've got a b-tech in hairdressing i thought i know everything so went into a shop in loughborough worked there for about a year and just over time man just gradually sort of uh, lost the love for it. It kind of yeah. wasn't because I went straight from hair, learning hairdressing then into a barber's. It was such a different like way of uh, cutting hair that it just threw me off. Um, so yeah, and then for the next sort of seven or eight years after that, worked at the airport, kind of left barbering as it was. Yeah, completely just did nothing apart from doing my dad's hair like a one all over, and then I slowly sort of just hated it yeah. I was like, I need to do something I want to do while I've still got the chance to change career and I uh, came across Sid's Tongue's uh, Academy in Nottingham <coughs> excuse me in Nottingham in the time he is a wicked mate, educator he's so, so good. talented mate he's so good and it was a five day course yeah, and I was like well, I've kind of got the basic skills. So it'd be nice as like a little bit of a refresher for you. This almost. was it. And I thought, well, if I can kind of come back so long after not doing it, come back with something to say, you know what you're doing. Yeah. And to learn, like you say, from such a great educator like him and Matt, who was the guy who took the course. And you go, oh, this is, yeah. this is what I signed up for yeah. all them years ago, which didn't quite get. Uh, and yeah, that was it. So then I've been back barbering for nearly six years so yeah it's been uh, and how long have you been here for so I've had the studio open for nearly two and a half years now yeah so literally just after the last lockdown finished we painted the last, last wall bit. and we literally opened the next day so yeah it was a bit of a lockdown project that 
do you from obviously because you work here yourself is do you ever miss that kind of thing of where you could be working alongside other barbers at all or do you like working by yourself would you say um it's there's certain times I do I think more so for like feedback yeah I think sometimes I think you can when you work on your own it's hard sometimes to kind of know fully yeah like and to have someone to bounce off with something like that where you you know sometimes I watch a haircut go down the drive and be like I'd love someone else to give me some feedback on it rather than just me assessing my own stuff so I do miss that kind of thing a little bit but I think because of the intimate way this is you tend to have a really good rapport with whoever's in the chair yeah so you kind of almost get that from the client almost which for me is great and then I get a little respite in between a little yeah. bit of quiet and then the next guy's in so yeah sometimes it is it would be nice to have someone else around but on the whole I, I generally like yeah sort of doing it for I me suppose, I, guess. I suppose your customers will kind of see that as an advantage of that one one time as opposed to like say you know being in the shop and having other people about it and stuff it's it makes it a lot more personal don't it the I'd say probably 75 80% of lads who come here come because it's one to one I think the the days I think certainly pre covid as well the days at post covid the days of that hustle and bustle barbershop yeah. and queuing and having everyone around yeah. you yeah. then lads don't want it anymore yeah. they they want to come in have a chilled conversation and then not have to worry about who's listening or who's watching and it then allows lads to open up a lot more yeah definitely and definitely creates that kind of um opportunity for guys where they don't normally have it to just come and chat about anything and, and that's what i was going to move on to next actually because i was going to ask you about like mental health um and it was going to be like do you know do you think barbers suffer with their mental health as they have to be at their best for customers, regardless of what's going on in their personal lives. Like, what do you think about that? Like, I think it's massive. I think we're one of the rare industries that has that thing where you have to perform every time you do your job. Like, we can't really have an off day, yeah. really, because everyone that walks in to the shop wants that perfect experience and. I think mentally it's so difficult for barbers at times to live up to that. And I think there's a lot of pressure, you know, that's from the client side. Then you throw in the social media side of yeah. things and everything else. You've, you're seeing all these guys doing these out this world haircuts yeah. and you've got to try and replicate that and want to get to that level. But mentally it's hard, yeah. you know, because yeah. we're real people We're you know, we've not, you know, you've, stuff going on and sort of for me personally like it's quite a relevant question I've last few months I've had a lot of stuff going on outside of here and it becomes harder to then yeah. get in but you have to we have to do it and it yeah, is yeah. like I think what I've learned again going back to how this space is is being able to open up to a client and talk about it actually sort of does help with my own mental health I think it's easy to ignore it as a barber you know yeah. you can talk about so many things that it just becomes that thing and then you get to the end of the day and your head's scrambled because yeah, yeah. you, you're trying to think of everything you're trying to deal with your own stuff but live up to expectation every time and the two never quite yeah. correlate do you know what I mean so yeah. I think it's it's tough and I think more needs to be spoken about about it because when most clients see us as you know everyone every barber's in a good mood yeah. everyone's like yeah, yeah how you doing because we have to be we have to be seen to be that and it's all smiles and because you know if a guy walks in and I'm sat here <sighs> yeah the experience is like dampened straight away and you know client retention then comes into it but yeah I think it's massive I think a lot of a lot of barbers do struggle with it, whether they know or not. This whole, I mean, in my opinion, you know, coming back to recent years, especially post COVID, as well. I think like the whole mental health thing has become a quite a good point for 
especially men. Mm. You know, to it's improved, hasn't it, a lot from compared to what it was. Yeah, and I think so. It, but it's obviously has a little way to go with everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it was so far behind before that. Oh yeah. It's now good that people are talking about it and, and addressing certain things. And this is it, and it's allowing guys to not feel like it's a weakness yeah. to talk about it because yeah. I think so many guys do. You know, I my a lot of my core mates are all rugby lads. They all they all play rugby, they play up the road, and you know, them opening up about feelings yeah. is yeah. so far away from what they've ever known. Yeah, it's hard, but then slowly but surely they're more akin to it. They've, they've seen it more. They're seeing guys open up. They're seeing me do it on social media. You know it's becoming more of a thing and it should be, yeah. you know, I think it's massive whether some guys deal with things differently, they don't want to talk about it, but giving lads an opportunity if they want it or to just send them in the direction of somewhere that will help. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Having that information as a barber is good as well. Like, cause yeah. it might help them look into other avenues to help talk about it. If yeah. not doing it here is, not working if that makes sense 100 percent, bro um why do you think other barbers fail <sighs> that's a big question, question man but i think what i've noticed from guys i speak to especially sort of new guys and guys that sort of um are new to the business it expectation is so quick now yeah everything has to be like yeah. now so you sort of finish your course or whatever qualification they do and the next day they've got to be cutting footballers' haircuts. They've got to be earning ten grand a, a month. They've got to be, you know, doing all the social media stuff. They've got to have brands. And I think they assume that's how it works when actually, like, you've got to build to that. And I don't think they people want to do that as much now. Like, like I say, for me, it's taken me fifteen years to get to a point where I'm satisfied with what I do and happy with how I am and how like I treat work but 15 years is a long time yeah. man like you know it's it didn't doesn't happen overnight and no. I think people and barbers now feel like they've got to be doing all of this like straight away and it's not it's not feasible like you, you have to you have to take time and yeah I feel that's like a big thing as to why people tend to sort of fail and then they don't want to try and do the work, so they just go, oh, I'll just go and leave that. It's not working for me. I'm not earning enough money. I'll go do yeah. something else yeah, yeah. where I can earn money straight away sort of thing. It's missing out of that building stage, ain't it? This is it. You know, you have to survive on a bit of rubbish money when yeah, you first start. You like, it's not great. You do. But you have to be patient with it. Uh, what advice would you give someone looking to start, Barbara? <sighs> Again, it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. Just be patient. Like, work hard be patient this is it you and then know, like you said about the money you've got to survive on little for a bit yeah understand that you know you're not going to be earning great money shops aren't going to be paying big wages straight away and if you're on self-employment you've got to graft you've got to do everything you can get every mate you know with a you know an inch of hair on their head beard anything just put the effort like yeah. put that time in to get in a client base like I was very lucky I had rugby lads and I just got them in, mm. persuaded them. It's like, yeah, it might not look great for a start, but stick with it and yeah. then just get people in the door and then build like that. And that's that's one of the best best things I did. And, you know, yeah, be, be, be patient with it because yeah. you're not going to be nailing skin fades the Straight day after you pass. Like, even though you'll have a certificate to say you're, you can do it, once you're in the shop floor and you're doing 10 a day, you know, that's when you've earned it, but it will take time to get that good. But Do you think um, too many shops are opening? And then, like, what would your opinion be on kind of how saturated the whole industry is becoming? Is that part of it? I think it is becoming, it's becoming that way. Like, you know, I'm from a small small town in Leicestershire. Colville's not a big area. But there must be... Uh, 10 to 15 barbers just in the town yeah like so many there's there's a barber shop on every road and 
you know, they're all compete with each other and I think it's so saturated and then you lose quality in that because I think they're not putting the effort in to kind of make it unique as well. It just turns into numbers, don't it? Yeah, it's just get them in, get them out and roll in, roll out and, you know, that's why I try to try to do this place is make it unique so in the saturated market there's a little bit of something different but I think yeah the industry in general is there's so many people wanting to do it which I think is good it's good for the business but I also think it's it's hard because again people are wanting to do everything yeah like um at too fast the speed yeah and I think then creates a lot of sort of, I don't know how to phrase it, maybe like, average, it's more average work, everything's just quick yeah. time stuff, and I think that's not what barbering's about yeah. for, for me personally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's so many places, and I think it puts a lot of pressure on like myself and other barbers sort of a little bit more independent because they can go and walk in and pay a tenner and be in and out in 20 minutes and done. And some guys absolutely love that. And, you know, I can't compete with that because it's not my style. style, but it's kind of that thing of then do you sacrifice a client for, you know, the relationship you have with a, a different one sort of thing, like yeah. that sort of thing, man. I hope that kind of answers. No, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I get it. Um, and do you think there's like, there's a lot of bar, a uh, lot of pressure on barbers keeping up with what's going on, like um, setting the prices and staying consistent and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Again, like because the market's so saturated, I think it's it will come to a point where so I think at the minute post sort of post COVID, a lot of barbers kind of cashed in a bit on it. Yeah. And put the prices up and yeah. kind of try to earn off it, which like it's fine. I get my like, bills and stuff are going up, and you've got to cover. But there'll come a point where I think people will start to undercut each other yeah. to get people in. And yeah. I think over time that will become more of a thing and it will be that thing of, oh, well, he's charging less, so why should I pay more to you and the whole thing. And I think barbers in general, like, you know, people were so used to paying £7 a haircut yeah. and yeah. that kind of thing became the norm and now it's it's changing, but... Yeah, I think it's hard to sort of keep up with it and sort of the pressure from myself as well, you know, I sort of find it hard to justify at the minute because of this setup, you know, I've not got bills. You know, you've seen I'm I'm at my, my folks' house, I'm not you know, I've not got the problems of the barbs I've got, but then it's still you know, I've got to earn a living and yeah, keep yeah. up with everything else and the price of everything else. So there's a lot of pressure on that. For me, I personally feel like it's hard to do. And then you try and gauge it with your clients almost a bit and have a talk to them without sort of asking directly. And, you know, some will say, yeah, you, you're undercutting yourself. You need to pay yourself more. And then others are like, oh, I don't know. If I, if you charge more, yeah, yeah, you start yeah. thinking, oh, they'll, they'll probably move away somewhere else. And the pressure of that is, is tough, man. And I think, yeah, I don't know how that works itself out at the minute, man. I think it's it's one of them things that hopefully over time settles again, yeah. I think. But yeah. I, yeah. Do you think like there's a big thing with beef between barbers? And have you ever had anything yourself? <sighs> I can't say I have person. I, I don't know. There's occasions where I've been out, you know, in, in the village and you sort of feel like there's like other barbers maybe sort of talking about you sort yeah. of just yeah. like when everyone's looking over you, it's kind of obvious there's been a few occasions maybe like that but I can't say I've ever had like beef but you see it a lot and I, th I think like you see a lot of resentment between barbers now 100% I think like again on sort of social media you do see kind of people getting annoyed because others have got opportunities and I'm not going to lie for, for a long time I kind of bought into that and it was like I looked at it saying, oh, why is he doing that? Yeah, yeah. Like, I could be doing that. Why yeah. do I not get this? And I think it's definitely there. I think there's definitely a thing. And again, it comes down to the market being so saturated yeah. that it's pressure almost creating this because it's, 
you know, oh, we need to be bringing the business money in. So if people are going other way, other clients are going other places for haircuts, it can create that sort of tension and panic, and then that leads to you know that arguments and stuff as well. I think which you know I try not to do. I'm not yeah. I'm not that guy at all. But you sort of see it. Yeah, of course. Sort of from around, I guess. Yeah. So that's kind of why I wanted to do this because I wanted to. I feel like now more than ever, I see a lot of barbers between each other, kind of not beefing, but mm. like you said, there's a little bit of friction there, especially if, if they're in the same area. And that's why I wanted yeah. to do this. So I wanted to kind of like make everyone work together. Yeah, in a yeah. way, do you know what I'm saying? And this is what I mean, man. Like, you know, um, it got, even when we first spoke about doing this, yeah. I was like, the the big thing that was a big, big compliment to me was the fact that you guys are relatively local. You yeah. know, you're not yeah. sort of next door, but you're a Leicestershire based sort of guys. And I was like, that's cool because it doesn't lead to like. Yeah, there doesn't need to be a thing of where no. you're working against each other. Yeah, the like, they're all in the same industry. Yeah. And that was like my main point with this whole YouTube thing as well. You know, just trying to get people to realize like, yeah, even though you're in the same industry, there should be a reason for you to work together more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there's nothing more. There's nothing more like I love than when you see like barbers who are local together, like praising each other yeah. and like, actually sort of working together almost to kind of build barbering as like a community. Yeah. And yeah. not just like I have my community in my shop, but it's like getting everyone to talk about hair in a fun way, whether they go to here or they go to the shop down the road or, you know, kind of creating that thing and yeah, that's for me what like cutting hair is about. It's not about, you know, getting aggy f with other barbers and stuff. I think it's more like we should be creating, yeah, creating this job so yeah. cool. It's such a sociable job. Why do then other shops not want to sort of join in on that? Yeah. Like, I'd love to work with other barbers locally and do like some one big project or something. And like what you guys are doing, I think is like, great because. It shows that and you can sort of, yeah, there's no need for this sort of tribalism yeah. stuff. I think it kind yeah. of, we should all just, yeah. you know, enjoy it together, man, and learn off each other. 100%. And make each other better. And, you know, there's, I think that'd be great. Do you, um, give me something you hate about the industry. <sighs> Mate, <laughs> Is there a big list? There's a, there's a bit of a list, man. I could go on, man. Like, um, a lot of people probably won't believe this just due to how I am, but like social media, like my setup requires it. Yeah. I have to do it yeah. to let people yeah. know where I am. And to an extent, I like creating the content, but there's so much that comes with it that yeah. I just think, oh, man, yeah, you'd rather not. It's just tiring. And there's so much good in it. And there's so much that could be better with it. But I just think, Sometimes just oh, just seeing guys doing all these things and yeah. you just look at it and go, oh, yeah. Man, yeah. it's for the, sake, for the sake of showing off yeah. and just that whole sort of thing. Yeah, it's tough. And, you know, there's other things along the line of like, you know, I feel like we are still disrespected as a job, I think, yeah, yeah. a little bit, which, you know, yeah. I guess that's not like hating about the industry but no. I think it's something I hate about how the industry is seen I don't think we get the respect still that as a profession as a profession yeah. I think you know I remember when I started cutting hair it's like oh you do it because you're you not very good at anything else, else. That, yeah. yeah you know you're yeah. a bit you're not quite the brightest you can't get to uni yeah just go and cut hair yeah. and you're anyone like can do it. yeah anyone <laughs> can do it and then it's that thing of going no, not anyone could do it. And then COVID kind of proved the, yeah. proved the point with that. But I think like, yeah, I hate that it's kind of undervalued still. I think we're getting better. But yeah, I think, yeah, this is not, mate, I could sit here all day. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, they're the kind of main ones, I think, in terms of that sort of thing. Just before I wrap up then, bro, uh, what are your goals moving forward? Goals moving forward. So I've got quite a few this year. I want to, I want to expand this place, I think, eventually. Yeah. I think that's the plan. Um, I want to 
build the brand even more. I wanna I wanna do more stuff like this. I wanna the whole sort of magazine fashion side of things I really wanna sort of get into this year and create sort of stuff for like editorial things. I think that'd be something I really wanna look at um, so. going forward because like I love the day to day and I love like just being in here and stuff, but I wanna like create stuff yeah. with it. I think yeah. I think to do like really cool haircuts and then to like make them look sick in like magazines and stuff like that I think is kind of a goal for me I think this year so yeah working on that I've got a couple of guys like I've got a photographer who comes down and so he comes and takes some shots for me and we're going to sort of do some stuff like that and he's got a little sh a studio space in Leicester in the city so I think we're going to go and try and Eventually, just create, on there. yeah, just try and create some stuff. Like he's an independent photographer. This and obviously we're independent here, so it's kind of just getting something together with him. And yeah, I don't know, just yeah, pushing just, the boundaries of what I can kind yeah. of do. I guess I yeah. think is is something that I really want to push this year. It's like so, a big goal, and obviously just keep building the clients and and stuff. And yeah, staying consistent with the work, basically. Basically, yeah, trying. To, obviously get better I think yeah, that's so kind of the case for all of us all the time I think like you want to you want to keep improving and setting this setting the standards and yeah but that the main goals for that yeah is to kind of branch out and so, push the boundaries a bit yeah man which, well thank you for letting me come down bro thanks for having me yeah, man it's, it's an honour man it's much appreciated we'll, um, we'll 100% do something together in the future man you should man you know what you're saying about how you want to get involved in new things and stuff we should definitely team up on something and yeah. get something cracking this year man that'd be sick man yeah. I'd be fully involved mate yeah yeah I think it'd be uh, be wicked I'd love to do something like that to be fair it'd be awful.